Opponents of the HS2 high-speed rail project have started an appeal today against a high court decision to reject most of their challenges to the legality of the scheme. Well, for more on this, we can join Wes Smith, who's live in our London studio. Where's HS2? Very controversial, but why do protesters say the government has acted illegally? Well, Bob, they say the government hasn't complied with European environmental legislation. It's quite clear the anti-HS2 protesters uh, are really keen to fight on with this one. They're not giving up easily. I was at the High Court just a few months back to hear uh, previous uh, moves to block HS2 pretty much completely thrown out by a, a judge there. But now a coalition of HS2 pressure groups are back at the High Court today, having raised £100,000. I've been finding out how they feel it went in court. We have got a strong case, we've got a good strong case, we were pleased with how it went in court today. The government, at the end of the day, they haven't looked at the environmental consequences, they haven't looked at the alternatives to doing HS2, and we, we just want the government to have a proper debate about this and look at the principles of HS2 and whether it really is what this country needs. And if you don't succeed after this appeal, what happens? Well, we're not giving up, we'll keep fighting. Now, three judges are hearing the evidence. Uh, much of the debate today has centred on issues around the London area, but the ripples, of course, from there will be felt across the central region. People living in Warwickshire and Staffordshire, worried about the effect on their countryside, helped raise funds for this hearing. Now, businesses and some long-distance commuters say a super-fast link between Birmingham and London is essential to the Midlands economy, and we've heard the party could play in the expansion of Birmingham Airport, of course. So, Wes, what's been the government's reaction to today's legal challenge then? Well, you can imagine there's been a locking of horns over this one, Lucy. Uh, both sides really fighting on. The Department of Transport has issued a statement saying it's unfortunate but inevitable that opponents of HS2 will do whatever they can to delay the government's plans. But the government remains committed to delivering HS2 as quickly as possible. Now, this hearing is likely to last until Thursday. Although the options for the protesters are diminishing, they've raised a lot of money to support their case so far, so they may well seek to do more. Watch this space.